So let's talk about this and why I'm kind of... I'm... If there's a road and people are like, I'm middle of the road, I'm like, eh, I'm veering to one side. So... For anyone that doesn't know, these are the patch notes that are on the PTR right this second. Right now. Bam. Um, Diva Defense Matrix. Regeneration rate from 12.5% to 16%. And the delay before regeneration begins has been lowered from 1 to 0.75 seconds. What this does is Diva regenerates her shields faster. How much faster? I think overall it goes from 8 seconds down to 6.5. Uh, that's what I, I did a little stopwatch thing on the PTR, and that's what I found out so far. Um, so she just, she can use it more often. Uh, of course, her max is still two seconds, but then again, she's going to recharge it a little bit faster. Um, overall, I don't like Defense Matrix going this path. In fact, I would like to go kind of the opposite. Um, what I mean by that is, like, I see Defensive Matrix as something, let's say, let's call it a skill tank ability. And what it's meant to do is deny specific abilities in the game. So ultimates, uh, usually abilities with cooldowns. I really don't see... I, I don't know if I want D.Va to have the ability to just shut down someone like a shield. Um, does that mean, like, in my best interest, like, maybe it goes to, like, one, one and a half seconds total, but then recharges extremely fast, so she can just pow, 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 kind of hit stuff out of the air. Uh, what they're going with this, and this is one of the notes that I'm kind of upset about Blizzard going, but just buffing D.Va in the first place, and we'll get to that later on. Um, but overall, this isn't terrible. Notice how they're not touching a tank's damage. Good. Uh, tanks don't need more damage. Orisa, nerf again one more second. I think this needs to be like 11 or 12 seconds, but of course they're just baby stepping until people stop playing her. Uh, I still think she's incredibly useful, just the strongest tank in the game right now. And mainly that's because, if you saw my blog post, uh, it's the whole idea of when they invented Reinhardt as a shield tank, they're like, great, this guy provides amazing shielding, but he can't attack. But they're looking at that, they're like, eh, it's kind of boring, though. Let's make it a hero that can put down a shield, but their attack's not that great. And so that's kind of Orisa. Uh, the truth is, her attack's amazing if it lands. She has some of the highest DPS in the game. She actually rivals uh, Junkrat, Farah, Hanzo, and Soldier uh, as far as shield break is concerned. It's funny, the two other heroes that are better than those four that I named are Hog and Orisa, or Hog and Diva. Uh, of course, Reaper and Bastion and Sim are up there as well. But at the 16, 17 second window to destroy Reinhardt's shield, it's a tie between Junkrat, Soldier, Farah, uh, Hanzo, and Orisa. Um, so, step in the right direction. Okay, cool. Go to Roadhog. One extra shot in his scrape, uh, scrape gun. Scrap gun. I like it. Uh, if anyone remembers what I wanted from Roadhog a long time ago, was I wanted Roadhog's primary to be his old attack. But it costs two ammo. Uh, his right click would be what it is now. So his right click would cost one ammo, uh, 150 max damage, and his uh, his left click, his just normal shot, would be 200 damage for 2 ammo, and you'd, you'd bump him up to 6 ammo. Uh, that's kind of what I wanted. They didn't do the change that I wanted, but they did increase his ammo to 6, which I think he needed. He just, he has a longer reload. I believe it's 2.25, if not 2.5. Um, or is it 2 seconds? Either way, it's longer than most heroes. So, cool. And Rod, I'll give him a, a DPS buff. I don't mind. Uh, then we get to the Sigma nerfs. Uh, kinetic Grass no longer blocks Chain, Hook, and Whip Shot. Great. Um, Hog is kind of... These two changes are like, alright, we can run Hog against a Sigma now. Uh, Graviton Flux, his high gravity duration is reduced by 0.3 of a second, so he's flying around for a little bit shorter time. Experimental Barrier. This isn't that big of a nerf, in my opinion. I don't know exactly like what percentage this is. What would this be like a... I'm pulling the number out of my ass. 17% chance... 17% lower... Um, no, it'd be less than that. It'd be like 15%. Uh, lower regeneration rate on his shield. Uh, now he has a one second cooldown after recalling the barrier, but the initial 0.2 cast animation has been removed. So 
This is a buff. This is a straight buff. This is a nerf, but it needs. I think it needs to be two seconds. Essentially, a one second opening. Unless you want to buff DPS more, no one's going to be able to do shit against it. Not only that, he still has his black hole ability, which you know absorbs everything. So I don't see a one second duration that big of a deal. Um, now that the initial cast time has been removed, it's good. It's a step in the right direction, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. Regeneration rate was never his issue. Uh, for those that don't know, he had a slower regeneration rate than Reinhardt or Orisa. Basically, any hero in the game, he has the worst regeneration rate on the shield, but it's still extremely high, especially when protected by another shield. So then we have the double shield area. Uh, Winston, barrier, six to nine seconds, does absolutely nothing. This change doesn't matter. Everyone says it does matter, doesn't fucking matter. Uh, maybe... You can start experimenting by putting it down and then, like, going off on your own. But the problem is, is, remember, he throws a shield down. So you have to be there. That's one of a, a big disadvantage of it. And if you're just throwing it down for a sniper and then leaping away, eh, you got nine seconds. Okay, cool. But it's still a pretty low uh, shield. I think it's more for covering snipers or doing something weird like that. But in main combat, like, where it's used prominently right now. So unless new Winston tech comes out, I don't see this as a huge boom. Again... Uh, I don't know the future. If new tech does come out with Winston and this does come into a play, all right, cool. Like At least like he has that option. Now. But I don't think it's going to be that big of a thing right now. Uh, health increased by 100. Not a big deal. Sure. Throw something Winston's way. I guess they're trying to uh, buff dive, and that's we'll get to that at the end, which is kind of like what I don't like. Immortality field down from 250 to 200. Just good. Um, 250, the thing about 250 was it, a lot of damage in Overwatch is centered around 70 damage. 60, 70, 75 is kind of like, all right, so 200 hit points, it takes three shots from a 70 damage weapon. Great. Like now it requires one less shot. And that's what I'm really concerned about with when it comes to hit points is, um, damage thresholds. So McCree kills it in three shots. Junkrat still kills it in two. Farah still kills it. Um, Farah kills it in two. Widow and Hanzo kill it in two from, you know, their full power shots. Uh, it's just a little, it's a, I won't even want to say it's a little bit easier. It's a, it's a, it's a decent chunk easier to kill. It goes, a lot of damage thresholds were pressed down one extra shot. So that's cool. Uh, Lucio crossfade, he gets 25 or five extra percent increase movement speed. Amp goes up by 10% again. But he loses 10% speed buff overall. So overall, Lucio is losing 5% as compared to before. He only gets... Right. Um, but overall for his team, it's increased. So, cool. Um, Lucio's already been kind of meta. He's already been played here a bit. Um, I don't mind it. I guess it's to help people rush down shields. Right, Sigma and Orisa, I guess just Orisa, you just rush down her shield, get, get behind it and start hitting her, right? You can't move it once it's down. So I think that's what they're kind of aiming for there, which again points to die. Uh, Mercy, the extra beam created by Valkyrie, now ignore enemy, enemy barriers. So I think this is just a response to, all right, Moira is so goddamn good because her ultimate goes through barriers. In fact, that's one of the main reasons why she's picked right now. Outside of her unbelievable poke damage that just fucking hits everything. Uh, Mercy now doesn't get uh, nerfed so hard when it comes to barriers in her ultimate, which means her ultimate just feels a little bit stronger, which is cool. It's an ultimate. It's not a bad change. Uh, Bionic Grasp, because Moira's in the thick of it so much, people are kind of pissed off that she's really hard to kill. She has a very thin model. Uh, and her healing was nerfed by 50%. I think this was justified, and... It's, I think this is a good change. This is, this is probably one of the better changes. Colored Bird says it should keep his wall ride speed exactly the same. Okay, gotcha. So when it adds up together. Okay. If it's the same, then cool. Sorry, I didn't even think about that. Uh, Doomfist. Rocket Punch, time to reach max charge increase from 1 to 1 1.4. So because if you do an initial just like tap with his fist and he gets a speed boost that's usually his escape mechanism 
It's going to be changed a little bit from this change, but not that much. What is changed is now people have 0.4 more seconds, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's 40% increase in time to hit Doomfist with any ability, mainly like sleep, boop, uh, even as a Junkrat, Concussive Mine, I'm going to hit him into the air now, uh, before he would reach max damage before I even had a chance. So this gives people uh, more time to do something against Doom, not kill him, just do something to not die uh, against the Doomfist. Uh, I think this is one of the best changes they've ever done. Uh, because it only affects his ability to one-shot, and it slows it down, which means he still has the one-shot ability, it's just that people have the ability to fight against it. I think it's a very elegant way of going about it. I think it's one of the most elegant ways about going about it, unless you want to drastically change Doomfist into a tank or something else. Um, and then the best defense, shield health reduced from 35 to 30. Um, this was a buff a long time ago, and they went back on it, which is cool. I think this is fine. The strange thing to note... Someone would have to jog my memory. When they made this change the first time, they increased his max shield. And they did not lower it here. So overall, it's still a buff. He got a max shield increase, but it's just the rate of gain is now lower. I think that's true. I could be wrong. Doom's punch as an escape mechanism does not change. Because you can do the thing where you tap punch and jump and essentially a mile away and you got easy without charging the punch at all. Right, Doc Fur, but the only reason I say it changes a little bit is because even a tap means... I, I, I don't know if a tap meant he got 80% of his full charge, and that's how he got away. 80% now just got 40% farther away. Uh, I shouldn't say 80%. One tap, now instead of doing 80% of his charge, or whatever the speed is, now does like 70%. So I'm just saying maybe it's changed a little bit. Uh, I could be wrong. That could have not changed at all. And if that's the case, all right, cool. Then Doomfist don't have to learn new rollouts and stuff like that. Which, cool, we get to save that new that old knowledge and we get to transfer it to the hero still and we don't get like these people getting pissed off because they're like, I sunk a bajillion hours into Doomfist and now I have to redo everything of the bajillion hours. So, all right, I get it, whatever, fuck off. Um, at the same time, it's like, if you got to learn the hero again, learn it again, stop bitching. It's literally the same thing. Okay. Samba, Translocator, cooldown increased from 4 to 6 seconds, and then cooldown now immediately begins upon deploying a beacon or if it is killed by an enemy. So this is a buff. For people that are confused about this change, what this line says is that as soon as the Translocator hits the ground, or no, upon deploying, so as soon as you throw it, the cooldown starts, which means you can recall, throw it again, recall immediately. So you can essentially do two hops. Um, the increase from 4 to 6 seconds I've never seen a Sombra do cycles like every 4 seconds it's just too quick and there, you're not getting that much out of it 6 seconds is not that big of a deal um, but yes this as far as anyone's concerned is a buff uh, and then we get to the Symmetra nerfs poor girl uh, Photon Barrier, this is the only change that I'm really wondering about. Uh, so the health reduced from 5,000 to 4,000. That's cool. I guess it's a little bit easier to achieve to blow up the wall in 12 seconds, but not going to happen. But the duration's a big deal. Uh, that's actually a significant deal. Uh, that's a 20% decrease in time. Which is huge. Whenever they do like 20% nerfs, that's it should be looked at a second time. Uh, the sentry turret damage from 50 to 40. Um, from what I've been told, and I talked to Steve about this a smidge. He's like, nah, man, this nerf was needed. Uh, essentially, turret bombs were really, really strong. And at lower SRs, they were just essentially devastating. Uh, it's still weird to attack this. From my point of view, I'm, I, whenever I think about Sim, and I'm not like, you know what's wrong with Sim? Fucking turrets. Too much damage. And I, I, I don't think I've ever said that. In fact, it's... It's never crossed my mind that they've done too much damage. I'm like, 50? 
With a six, what is it, 10 second cooldown? She gets three of them? Sounds fair to me. Um, and people are saying, well, it's a double nerf on the photon barrier. It's 20% health reduction. I don't care if it's 20% health reduction. It's like if a shield had 10,000 hit points and you reduced it by 20%. No one's busting through that fucking thing. Very, very rarely, unless people put extreme resources to the shield, will they now kill 4,000 damage in 12 seconds. And essentially the case will be a bongoed hog or a nano boosted hog. Uh, nothing else is destroying the shield. That's all it's introduced is, hey, hog alt now can kill the shield. Great, but it's you used up hog alt, which is pretty good alt, uh, to get rid of it. Uh, players impacted by the fire beam should now hear a louder impact sound. That's fine. Uh, increasing player responses is all. I'm, I'm good for with all of that. And now, the change that hit me out of left field. I was just in like this the day. I was like, huh. And someone just like, bam. I was like, ah. Oh, the fuck hit me? Tracer? Uh, we get it. We get it, Blizzard. You're not real subtle about it. Trying to buff die. But what this does more than anything, so it puts her fall off damage starting at 10 me or 13 meters instead of 10. For those of you that don't know, fall off damage in Overwatch usually, and I just mean this usually, I think there are different cases, fall off damage starts and then goes for 10 meters and it stops. And for Tracer, it would go down to a 30% of her primary damage at a minimum. Uh, for Bastion, Soldier, McCree, if I remember correctly, I'll go down to 50% instead of 30%. Um, so, it goes down to 30% over 10 meters, which means uh, at 13 meters, she's going to be doing 100% damage instead of whatever, what is it? At 3 meters, she would be at, let's say if it's linearly, it would, she would be at 70% damage. So at 13 meters, instead of doing 70% damage, she's doing 100% damage. The kicker is... Um, Tracer's primary, like, dissuasion uh, for long-range combat is not her fall-off damage, it's her spread. Like, after one shot, she spreads. She can still two-clip at 20 meters... So the problem, Starkiller, with that is the clips going around are against the bots on the training um, trading simulator. The problem with the bots in the trading simulator is that they have huge fucking hitboxes. Don't... I, I can't stress it enough. Do not look at those bots and be like, oh, that's the size of a 200 point hero. No, that that those bots are closer to Reinhardt's size than they are Genji size. So the spread is the main... Thing that kind of dissuades her from engaging at like 15 meters besides you know the fall of damage so what does this really help at 13 meters well it helps hitting bigger targets what are bigger targets tanks shields so i think if nothing else this helps her deal a little bit extra damage against shields which her dps against shield isn't terrible for one second she does 220 damage one second reload so her damage against shields is 110 I think that's more than a McCree. Um, I don't know McCree's DPS against shields after the, uh, the fire rate increase, but 110 DPS against shields isn't terrible. Um, essentially, it, it just assists her on breaking shields somewhat. Uh, so, it's a decent change. It just came out of left field. I think Blizzard just wants... Tracer to be picked more and just have more usefulness. Uh, I don't care about the bug fixes, yada, 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 whatever. Um, so, overall, like, the patch notes aren't terrible. I would like not a Tracer buff, because she's already one of the best heroes in the game. Uh, I know the meta doesn't suit her, but she's still amazing. Talk to a good Tracer, they dominate still. Um... Sim nerfs. Sim and Junkrat are just fucking buddies right now. People don't want them to exist, and they just kind of sit in the corner. Doomfist nerfs, I think, were pretty elegant. Moira nerf was the right thing. Mercy buff, cool. Lucio speed change, why not? Um, Baptiste change, I get it. Immortality field strong, you can nerf that. 
I think that's okay. Winston was a weird one. Uh, Sigma, kind of in the right direction. They really need to change the fact that, and if you look at my latest blog post, I say this. Essentially, Sigma operates at like 70% of a tank, 70% of a DPS, and can do both at the same time. But I think it's a little bit too good. Uh, I think he should lose one of his bodies when shield is out. It's just the fact that he throws out a shield, no DPS can challenge him, you have to run away. It just sucks. It, it, it's really, it makes you feel pretty helpless. Uh, that's what I would like with that, but these all changes are a step in the right direction. Roadhog buff, I love the fat fucker. Uh, great. Protective barrier, Risa, I want a harder nerf, but sure, we'll take a little baby step. Diva buff, not happy about it. And the reason why I'm not happy about Diva, Winston, and Tracer is that they're trying to buff die. Why are we in this really shitty spot for balance in Overwatch right now? Can anyone tell me? We actually discussed it in my Discord. So if you're from my Discord and you saw it and you're going to say it, shame on you because there's some other people. Should we talk? I like to ask questions. That's the key because they didn't nerf dive. Bing. Stick Fox was there. Stick Fox, piece of trash. Someone else could have answered. But Marlboro is also right. Force meta. Um. Essentially. The usefulness of some heroes are up here, and the useful oh, up here, and some heroes are down here. So they're like, oh, we'll buff these heroes to be up here. So they're like, all right, bam, now this hero is powered. The problem was is this hero is maybe underpowered because of the meta. But now the meta favors them, and then they look at this hero, and they're like, oh, god, that hero is weak. We got to buff them. And they buff them, and then they're like, oh. Well, this hero's weak now. We gotta buff them. And this is what everyone talks about with power creep. Power creep, heal creep, mobility creep, whatever you want to say. It's when we start... Bah, 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 and they keep on going up and up and up and up and up. But you know what doesn't change? Base hit point values. So, shit just gets crazy. It's funny because I've done a bit of game design in my life. I've been around for Dota since its existence in Warcraft 3 as a mod. Everyone always says, why don't you buff the other heroes instead of nerfing the good ones? That would be better. And I'm like, all right, thing in Dota, back in the day, we had like 80-something heroes. And I was like, so we buff 83 heroes instead of nerfing one. That's what you guys want. They're like, yeah. And I'm like, no, 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 because your heroes will keep on buffing. They're like, whoa, that's slippery slope. That's a, that's a logical fallacy, and I'm smart, so your argument doesn't matter anymore. And I'm like, no, like you just keep on buffing shit, and the game gets real shitty. Blizzard is now trying to buff Dive, and that's another thing. Is not, not only trying to buff their way out of the issue, they're trying to buff a specific option. Like, all the creativity that everyone said Overwatch had has been, like, cut in half because of 2-2-2. Two, two, two. There's no arguing that. Now to say, all right, well, we're buffing Dive. It's like, what, well, why do you have to buff Dive heroes? Why do you have to buff Dive specifically? To a certain point... When we join a game, do we have to click a button? Oh, do I play DPS for dive? Do I play DPS for bunker? Or do I play DPS for double shield? Now do I have to do these specific metas instead of letting the game figure stuff out organically? Uh, that's the biggest problem with them specifically buffing dive tanks and dive heroes. Lucio, Tracer, Winston, Diva. They're buffing three force, force six, fuck it, of dive. That reduces down to two-thirds. I get it. I know. But 4-6 was a lot easier. Um, I don't like how they're like, all right, dive button, press. Well, now you can do dive or double shield. And it's like, eh, I want I want other choices. You got all these heroes. Why the fuck are you like, play these six heroes or these other six heroes? That's it. And that's what really pisses me off, Buffy. Uh, I don't like how they're trying to buff themselves out of another situation instead of nerf nerfing shit. Uh, in my latest blog post, I'm just like, the theme of it is, and I learned it from hockey, I'm from Detroit, um, during the playoffs, sometimes the refs call too many penalties. And I remember there's some old school announcers, and they're like, let the players play hockey. Please, refs, like, just let them play. Um, and it's not like the refs stop calling penalties all what you know whatsoever, they just get a little bit lenient on penalties. And they just allow people to play hockey like they used to do in the good old days. 
Uh, and that's how I feel about Overwatch current. I... I just want to fucking play. I... I... I don't want them to buff Junkrat and get, like... Let's say they're, like, make, they make Junkrat super meta. Just so people don't think I'm, like, super Junkrat biased. If they gave Junkrat plus 400% damage against shields, I would fucking hate it. Why? Because that is as shitty a design choice as making someone that only holds a shield. If my only job is shooting shields, I don't want to fucking play the game. They're easy to hit. They're just big red boxes. And I shoot them. That's my job. Thanks, Blizzard. Great fucking game. Uh, the same thing on the opposite side. There should be no tank that's a job is just to sit there with a shield and do fucking nothing. Arisa! Uh, I think both of those ideas are poor. Like, I just want to play Overwatch. I don't want to have the Sigma with a 1500 shield that he can constantly relocate in front of him so I can't deal damage while he does 120 damage a volley. 110 damage now. It's like, alright, so I get two volleys, which just costs him like a second and a quarter, and I have to get through... 1500 damage worth of shields and a 400 hit point hero. I have to do 1900 damage in a uh, second and a quarter to compete with this guy or just run away constantly. Like my Horizon Lunar game, which I just played, which was chat laughed, like you ran away 70% of the time. That's Chuck Rant. That's most DPS now. Is that a tank up there? I'm out. I can't compete against that. Uh, it just, it's really irritating. I just want to play Overwatch. I don't want to shoot shields. I want to shoot people. Um, and then Mostly Power says it in chat right here. He says, you play what Blizzard wants you to play. I call this gaming parenting. They're not game designers. They are game parents. They are sitting above you and they're like, whoa, you can't do that. Whoa, and they start changing stuff. No, no, no. You have to play the game this way. And it's like, where's my creative freedom? Where's, where's just my liberty just to play the fucking game? Uh, I know people don't like pointing out glitches and flaws, but why do you think rocket jumping's a thing? Quake 2 bug. Not Quake 2, sorry. Quake 1 bug. Uh, strafe jumping. Bunny hop. All these kick-ass mechanics we got from the old days was because phys physics engines were shit, and there was some crazy stuff you could do. And some games are built upon these flaws. Now. So just to have a gaming parent style where they don't allow you to do anything but what they want you to... It just puts Overwatch in a really shitty spot. Uh, I'm really disheartened about it. Somebody even asked the other night, they're like, Crow, if, if you weren't a streamer, would you be playing Overwatch right now? I, I would. Guys, I don't want to play this game where I'm, I'm just shooting shields. I mean, I still have fun, don't get me wrong. I love my chat. I love my audience. I still find ways to fuck around and have fun. And the fact that I still get... We're at 190 viewers. This is... Wonder, more wonderful than I've done in a while. But, like, I hold 120 to 130 viewers playing fucking Slay the Spire for half of my stream. Quite literally, yesterday, no, sorry, two days ago, uh, I streamed for three hours and 35 minutes, and I played for half of that time. Half, 50% of the time was gaming, 50% was Q. Um, it sucks. Guys, it sucks right now. I, I I I put a lot out on my blog post if you want to see how I think I should, the game should change. Honestly, the views that I had from the game a year and a half ago, two years ago, on my first blog post, they still hold true. All of these issues come from one thing. They did not want to nerf Genji and Tracer from day one. Sounds crazy, I know, but they didn't want to nerf Dive back then. So they started introducing heroes like Doomfist to kill dive. They introduced Brigette. And at that point, the game changed. As soon as they started designing heroes to defeat metas, think about that saying. Jeff Kaplan and Barry Ding Dong said it himself. He says, he said it with Doomfist and he said it with Brigette. He said, this hero will change the meta. You know what that means? That means one hero has the ability to deal with six. That's overpowered. Just that concept alone. I don't care what hero it is. If you have one hero that can deal with six heroes, fuck them. That is bad design. It's it's overpowered in nature. Like, you can't sit down at a table and like, let's design one hero to defeat six. It's like, well, I'll, I'll just play that one hero. So, someone in chat's like, Widow? Question mark? 
it kind of gets to that point. Um, you shouldn't design heroes for a meta. I don't even want to say you should design heroes for a very specific purpose. Uh, I really like how Dota has done hero design, even before Ice Rock, when Pendragon still ran it. Um, heroes were designed, and they were just designed. They were like, this is a four-position support, or this is a four-position offlaner. They're just like, look at this cool hero. Guys, figure out what it does. That is beautiful design. When they gave us Brigette, they're like, we see you're having this issue. Check out this golden answer that will fucking kill everything about that thing you hate. And then everyone picked it. And everyone's like, wow, games really suck. Um, there's just a lot. There's just a lot of go. Um, man, what was I just about to say? It was going to be this, like, this rock star point I was about to say, and I just forgot it. Oh. Someone was talking about core Overwatch mechanics, and they're like swapping. Bullshit. Uh... I know it sounds crazy, but the reason why, and I really wish I could sit down with Jeff Goodman because he seems to be the designer behind it, uh, and ask him, alright, if the game is based around swapping, does that mean the defense always loses? And you're like, what do you mean? Well, I send out one hero, I send out a Sombra, see what the team's running, I counterpick them, because I counterpick them, I win the fight, Right? Because technically a counterpick is an inherent advantage I didn't work for, which means it's skillless. And since I'm doing something that's consistently skillless, but provides me an advantage, I should win that fight. And then they'll change their heroes on defense a second time. I'll change my heroes, beat their heroes. Um, the problem with counterpicking is it's good in theory, but as soon as you're like, can the defense change their picks? No, they cannot. All right, so we have counterpicking, but you didn't put it into the environment of attack versus defense, which is what the Overwatch is designed around. And it doesn't work. Now only one team can swap. And at that point, you're like, well, that then that's not fair. One team always has the advantage. It's, it's core stuff. It's like really core ideas like that where I'm like, I don't think Overwatch is ever going to work like they want it to work because they just didn't design it properly from the ground up. Like, fuck whatever heroes you're thinking about. Just think about the core concept of counterpicking, attack versus defense, stuff like that. Counter Hero swapping is also discouraged mechanically. Sorry, I'm reading from chat. As long as alts matter, swapping is punished. Technically, yes. As long as hero swapping really is punished, people aren't going to do it as much. But then you're like, well, do we save alt charge? Well, then I go on a hero that has support. Well, now you could do it. I think you could almost do that now. So before the issue was, is I ran a support, built alt super quick, swapped to a DPS, used that alt. Um, now that you can't swap roles, technically everything within the role should kind of build alt the same. So maybe you could save some alt charge. Maybe start at 50%. It's, it's worth a shot. And just see if people swap more. If you really wanted to hit that um, that goal or that that ideal, um, I was throwing around ideas in my head. I had more shower thoughts, and I was like, "What if the point? What if you could change your hero on defense on the point that you're defending, or like keep the first spawn room or the second spawn room open and the defense can use it to swap heroes. Don't allow them to heal in there, but they'll allow them to swap heroes. And if the point's being taken, they're not allowed to swap. It may, it's a very complex mechanic. It changes things greatly. But essentially, if you allow both teams, both sides to swap heroes, not in the minute of combat, but like right before it, when they see like there's a huge disadvantage, then you kind of could run counters. But then again... The defense would win if they got to swap to a perfect counter off. Which, again, the problem with counters is that it's not fun because, again, a counter means you have the advantage over someone else inherently, which means it's skillless. It means you have an advantage over someone without putting any effort in. And as soon as you're like, oh, I won through a skillless mechanic, it starts getting a lot less fun.
Was the Global Ultimate nerf worth it? So from what I've been told, and from what actually I've seen in Overwatch League, yes. Essentially, people never swapped heroes in Overwatch League because alt charge was generated at such a rate that you would they would, you would get alt cycled, and they called it being cycled. Um, where, and this is an issue with tank alts in general, whereas I use one tank alt, I use Graviton Surge. And all my team builds alt off of that. And then another guy comes in and suns everyone, like Reinhardt, and then everyone builds off alt for that. And then support uses an alt, and I built alt up for that. By that time, the next tank is, is um, alt charge again. Uh, so what the 12% did is it broke this cycle. Now, if I engage in one fight and lose, and I swap, I'll be at an alt disadvantage for one fight, instead of being an alt advantage, uh, disadvantage uh, twice. Or basically unlimited amount of times. Because now it takes them two fights to get their full alt instead of one, which means my next fight after the fight that's lost, or after the fight that they use ultimates, I have a chance of uh, getting my alts and pushing them. So the 12% alt nerf was good. Um, yeah. So if anyone wondered what my thoughts were, I just puked them all over the screen. Most likely because most people are like, fuck him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. But, yeah. Does anyone have any questions? I'll queue up for Overwatch because, well, it's an Overwatch stream. Hug Your Dog says, I like most of your thoughts. Well, read my blog then. Eight minute queue times, you son of a bitch. Is Double Sniper going to return next? Not if they keep buffing Dive. That's the biggest issue, is they refuse to nerf people. Like, frankly, nerf, undo this Tracer change, not needed. Nerf Widow, nerf Hanzo. Doomfist, keep the nerfs in. The problem is if you really if I wanted to change Overwatch, I'd have to change so goddamn much. But at that point, once Widow and Hanzo are nerfed, essentially all DPS become viable. That's the big thing. Uh Widow and Hanzo are just they outclass everyone. They outclass everyone immensely. And then according uh, then look at my blog post, I would reduce some tanks burst damage conditions, so that it happens less often. Um, for those that don't know, what I consider, I consider tanks, one of their balancing factors is not just burst damage, it's the condition in which burst damage happens. So, Reinhardt does really sh consistent DPS. Okay, this is what a tank is. Consi or This is the DPS focus of a tank, the damage side of a tank. A very low but consistent DPS. You look at Reinhardt. Look at uh, Roadhog without his hook. Just think about Roadhog just in a normal game. He just does like 50, 60 damage per shot. Yes, he gets some meaty shots up close, but most of the time he's doing like 50, 60 damage every now and then with his fall off. Uh, Winston does 60 damage. Reinhardt does 75 a swing at 0.9 seconds. Zarya with no charge does, uh, was it 90 DPS? I forget the exact number. And Orisa without halt, like, she does good DPS because she doesn't have fall off, but at longer ranges it doesn't hit as much. Now, their burst conditions are a little bit different. Winston and Reinhardt, if they start cleaving, they do insane DPS. They actually do some of the most DPS in the game if they hit five or six people. Uh, Zarya, if she gets her charge up, she starts doing insane burst damage. Uh, Sigma kind of doesn't have it. He has it with Rock and a shot, but he doesn't really have burst damage, per se. Um... And then Roadhog has Hook. And these are like their conditions for doing a lot of, amount of, uh, a lot of damage in a short period of time first in. Uh, and it's what makes the tank feel fun. It's like, oh, right, all right, I'm just doing a little bit, a little bit of damage, a little bit of damage. I'm doing my tank job, but I'm doing a little bit of damage, not too much fun. And then they're like, ah, bam, a lot of damage, killing people, super fun. Um, and that's how tanks are designed, really, in Overwatch. And I, with tanks, I think some of them, Zarya, Diva. And Sigma and Orisa 
need their burst conditions lowered, but not burst them. So I'm not saying nerf their damage, I'm just saying nerf their ability to do burst damage as often as they should. How did my fucking Caspar get up there? Hold on, this is... What are you doing up there, Caspar? Man, I always had it at the bottom. I was up at the top for whatever reason. Have you considered having days where you just play one of those games you've been interested in, at least until things improve in Overwatch? Might be a lot of fun. No. What about Wrecking Ball? I would I think Wrecking Ball's one of the best tanks in the game, design wise. Uh he doesn't do a huge amount of damage. He does slam and then he can shoot you down, but if a support's supporting you, he almost can never get that kill. Uh, also, he has to risk himself in doing this. I, I like that design. I like that he's mobile, he's skillful, it, I really like him. And he does a bit of burst damage, but I think it's just well done. Uh, it's It doesn't seem excessive at point. Essentially, if Hammond does burst damage against me, it kills me. I had a couple seconds to shoot him before he got to me. I had a second to shoot him while he slams, and I got a second to shoot him while he shoots me and kills me. Uh, if anything, if I would do anything to Hammond, I would lower his slam radius by like a meter. Just because sometimes it pulls you in from what feels across the fucking room. He also does 50 damage on rolling. Right, so it's, again, the 50 damage on rolling is that low consistent DPS. And then his weapons are also low because of the fall off damage, low consistent DPS. Of course, there's that burst if he's really right next to you and hits a whole bunch of headshots, but that's kind of the skill side of things, and that's cool to have. So, that's what I think of him. But overall, that's how I see Overwatch and how they should move forward. If you want to be like, what would Overwatch be in your ideal opinion? It would be a lot of changes. Because I would start by changing, like, I would probably change maps. I would have to change some initial, like, just design choices, like how attack versus defense works. I would redo shields and armor and all that stuff. And a lot of things would change. Um, 